I remember asking my parents often when I was a child, why? Why do we have to do this? And their response was, because I said so. And that's true at times. But sometimes it's insufficient. So we want to begin a sermon series uh, this weekend called Why? Why? Today I want to look at why face-to-face -face fellowship. On next week, if the Lord wills, we'll talk about if God already knows my needs, why pray? And then week after that, we'll talk about as a Jesus follower, if heaven is guaranteed, why give my whole self on earth? And then the last week, we'll talk about why global missions. Speaking of global missions, we are partnering with World Vision. And where I want to encourage you to begin thinking about prayerfully considering sponsoring a child in the third world. And so we are looking for 110 people who will say, yes, I'm interested in learning about sponsoring a child in the third world. If that's you, you can fill out a comment card and more information will be provided. In addition, we're also going to be asking you to prayerfully consider 120 of you to sign up for a global missions trip. Countries are reopening and um, we would love for 120 of you over the next 18 months, this is not next week, but over the next 18 months to say, I'm willing to go on a global, global missions trip. Again, if that strikes your interest, then fill out a comment card and turn it in and we'll be in touch with you. Let me see the hands or the comment cards or bulletins. You have them? Wave them at me. All right, very good. Thank you in advance for doing that. Well, here's the sermon in a sentence. Now, I didn't say the sermon was going to be a sentence. I said, here's the sermon in a sentence. And the sermon in a sentence is this. Because Jesus sacrificed to personally be present with us face to face on earth, then we also should sacrifice to be face to face with others. That's the sermon in a sentence. Because Jesus personally, physically sacrificed to be with us on earth, we should also face to face be with each other. That's the sermon in a sentence. You should be looking at a photo of Mike Rickster. Mike, I met in December of 2010. And I asked Mike, Mike, how did you become acquainted with hope? Mike said to me that Jackie Jackson, a former elder who now lives in East Tennessee, invited him to church. He had not been to church in a while, so he decided to come on a Saturday evening. And he came early uh, because he just wanted to be on the campus and get a feel for what he was going into. The church was larger than he expected. And as he noticed, as people were walking in, nobody had on a coat and tie. He had on a coat and tie. And he sat in his car, and he said, well, I think I'll take off my coat. He took off his coat, and he kept observing people. Nobody had on a tie. And so in the car, he took off his tie. And then he came in. After the worship hour was over, Mike was sitting still. Um, ruminating over the worship, and a mature white couple came to him, whom he did not know, and said, young man, something seems to be bothering you. Can we pray for you? And he said, yes. In fact, he had filled out on a comment card that he was having major heart surgery 
that week. And so they prayed for him. Mike said that when he finished the operation, he got a call from the caring department that they were praying for him. And then the next day, he got a visit from the caring department here at Hope. He said, I'm not even a member of this church. I just wrote on a comment card and I've got a call and a visit. Well, when he was released and went home, one of the deacons in the area dropped off a meal on his front door. And he called the church and said, listen, I live too far. I'm in South Haven. Don't bring me any meals. I'm fine. They didn't listen. And so Mike said, when I get well, I'm going to come to that church. And he did. Three years later, uh, he was ordained as an elder. Mike was the general manager of the Southland Mall. And four years ago, after having lunch with his wife, Rosalind, he had a massive heart attack in his office and died on the spot. He now lives in the presence of God. But Mike was impacted because of the presence of people in his life. And so remember this, face-to-face -face fellowship is not only beneficial for the rich blessings that it brings us, but face-to-face -face fellowship is also a rich blessing that we bring to others. Now, I'm going to say that again. Face-to-face -face fellowship is not only beneficial for the rich blessings that it brings us, but face-to-face -face fellowship is a rich blessing because of the benefit that it brings others. You never know who you are encouraging just by meeting them and worshiping with them and serving with them face to face. Now, make no mistake, virtual worship is a gift. It is a gift that God has given us. And how many of you, when we were closed for seven months, worship virtually? Anybody? Of course. All of you who are here did that. Virtual worship is indeed a gift. It is good, and we thank God for it. However, it is an option, an alternative option. Face-to-face -face fellowship is the best option when available. Virtual worship is important, and we ought to take advantage of it when necessary. But face-to-face -face fellowship is indispensable, and we do that as God's primary mode for worshiping. And here's why as we talk through this passage. Hebrews chapter 10, 19 through 25. Therefore, brothers and sisters, the word is anthropos in the Greek, it means brothers and sisters. Since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works in this context, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. From the day we are born, anthropologists, behavioral scientists, pediatricians tell us that human touch is critical for a baby all human beings from the day we're born. And if we don't have healthy human touch, then our growth emotionally and intellectually will be stunted. The same is true in the spiritual realm. We need healthy human touch, visualization, face-to-face -face fellowship in order for us to grow to be the best that we can be in him. So why is face-to-face -face fellowship important? I'm glad you asked. 
How is important. And the church addresses that. How can I be my best self in him? How can I have a better marriage? How can I succeed at work? All of that is important, but we can't neglect the why. So why face-to-face -face fellowship before we come to the communion table? The first is because Jesus came down face-to-face. -face. He came down face-to-face, -face, and therefore, it is an example for us that we too will sacrifice to be with each, other, with, with each other face to face. Note the text says, he came in the flesh, that is visibly, so that I could see him and touch him. In the beginning was the Word, John says, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not made anything that was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. And verse 14 says, and the Word became flesh and it dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. We touched his glory. We saw his glory as the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. He came face to face. Secondly, we see in this passage that it refers to the Holy of Holies. In the temple, the wonderful temple, there was a secluded, a sanctified, a very special place called the Holy of Holies. In that room stood the Ark of the Covenant, representing the mercy of God. The high priest would go into that room once a year to confess all the sins of the nation of Israel. Only the high priest could go into it, and that was only once a year. This Hebrew writer says that when Jesus came down flesh to flesh, that he opened that door, that holy of holies, so that there are no barriers between us and God because of the work that he did on a hill called Calvary. We now can approach God not once a year or in one place, but 24-7, 365, we have access to God the Father because of what he did when he came down face to face on earth. And so it matters that we are face to face in fellowship. Secondly, because it's a command to, to congregate. He tells us, don't neglect the assembly of yourselves together. It's a command. And why do I do it? Because God said I ought to do it. He knows the benefits that come with me. How did the early church do it? They assembled every week on the Lord's day. So they assembled weekly, W-E-E-K-L-Y, not W-E-A-K-L-Y. Wake up the person next to you. And when they could not assemble in large groups, they met in homes multiple times a week because it's a command to congregate. And I don't always like to congregate, particularly with uh, family reunions, I, I just didn't like to go, but I asked mom, why we got to go in uh, Huntsville? Why we got to go in? Because I said so. It was a command. And I particularly didn't like to go to this one place because my aunt, um, she too snuff. <laughs> and invariably, she would come and say, hey, baby. And, and so I really, when he came, I would try to project when he was going to kiss me and try to go the opposite way I, I missed every time. Ugh. But she was a legacy in our family. And it was important to my mother and to her to see us face to face. Because I repeat, face to face fellowship is not only beneficial for the rich blessings that it brings us, but it is beneficial for the rich blessings that we bring to other people. And then the third thing is because face to face is the best way to fully commune. We can commune virtually, but to fully commune is face to face. Seven times, us, 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 we, 
brothers, sisters, and in this passage seven times because he wants us to know it's collective. And then fourthly, why face-to-face? -face? Because of the cost benefits, the spiritual cost benefits that it brings us. And there are three, three things that happen when we're face-to-face. -face. One, it causes us to think deeply about each other when we see each other. It causes us to think deeply. The Greek word there is a beautiful word, katanaeo. Katanaeo means to think deeply about a person. It means to think specifically about a person for the purpose of moving them, inspiring them to love and good works. And that is triggered when I see someone face to face. My favorite youngest daughter is an example of excelling at Colonel A.O. Rhoda Anna Smith considers deeply. She thinks specifically when it comes to sad days and glad days, when people are hurting in our family and beyond, or when they are celebrating our family and beyond. Her gifts, her letters, and her cards are very specific and demonstrate she has thought deeply and specifically about this issue. And I love her for being an example to me on how to excel in considering thinking about other people. And I look forward to her gifts because I know she's put thought into it. I'm going to read a letter to you I received from a young man uh, a few years ago. We were at a wedding together, and I was jostling around with him. He's about six or seven. And I gave him five bucks and told him to get him some ice cream or something. <clears throat> a few days later, he wrote me this letter. He said, Pastor Rufus, I had so much fun joking around with you yesterday at Elizabeth and Daniel's wedding. Please use this $5 to give to a child who may need a t-shirt for VBS. Sincerely, misspelled, Henry Ruddlesell. Now, I get a lot of letters. Not a lot of them good, but I get a lot of letters. But I keep this one because it represents Kadanaeo. He was a young man who took something that was given to him and said, I want to be a blessing to somebody else. Here's the second reason. Not only does it cause me to consider, but when I am in the presence of other people, the Hebrew writer says, it stimulates me to good works. The Greek word means to stimulate or to irritate. But the goal is it moves me to do something. And so Paul says, uh, the Hebrew writer says, when we do gather together, that visual stimulation causes us to act. Now, stimulation is positive. It means to motivate and to move a person, to act. And if I'm honest with myself, I need that. But the word also means to irritate. And irritation also causes me to act. All right, my wife is here, and I don't want her to hear this. Close your ears. Sometimes I'm motivated because she stimulates me to do love and good works. Good attaboys, pat on the back. But there are other times. When I do the stuff I'm supposed to do because I don't want her to irritate me. <laughs> Am I by myself? <laughs> when I see her face, uh-oh, I didn't do, I said I was going to do, I've been procrastinating. She don't have to say a word, just irritant. <laughs> just because I see her face. Did that happen to somebody? Listen, if you have a, a parent, have children, or if you've been, a, how many of you have been a child? Anybody? All right. Then you know this. You must think deeply and specifically about a child because what works for one does not stimulate the other. Sometimes they need stimulation, positive motivation. Other times they need irritation. 
in order to get things done. That's what that Greek word means. It means to stimulate and to irritate to the end of moving people to action. That happens best when I am face to face. And then lastly, Paul says, consider one another, how to stir up one another, stimulate one another, irritate one another to love and good works, to love and encourage one another. That happens most fully when I am face to face. It gives me accountability to people and to the Lord. I'm inspired by a doll company, D-O-L-L, and what they did for a little girl named Emma. Watch this. After she arrived, they, um, she was given a room to stay while her new leg was being made. She was fitted with a leg in her favorite color pink and started walking on it right away. After a few weeks of training to walk and run in her new prosthetic, she is ready to go home and live her life without limitations with you. <laughs> oh, okay. What do you say to the people? Tell Thank them, you. Tell them thank you. Thank you for making me. <laughs> you know what I got a kick out of her little sister <laughs> she was so excited for her That's what it does when I caught on the AO, when I am thinking deeply about a person and specifically to move them, motivate them, stimulate them to love and good works. Face-to-face -face fellowship is not only beneficial for the rich blessings that I receive, it is beneficial for the rich blessings that I give. Let's pray together. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for coming down in the flesh, face to face. And we pray that you would help us to understand the impact of accountability when we are with one another in the flesh. Uh, we pray that you would help us to think deeply and specifically about people and how we might stimulate and even irritate to love and good works. Because that's what you do for us. And as we prepare to come to the table, we thank you for thinking deeply about us. And we look retrospectively at Calvary. We look introspectively at ourselves. And we look prospectively toward your return. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. We love to pray for you and celebrate alongside you. 
Please share anything going on in your life with us at HopeChurchMemphis.com slash prayer. And subscribe to the Hope Church Memphis YouTube channel to experience previous worship services and more. Have a great week.